welcome to the welcome to the uh, painting and coordination lesson by Pavel. There's Pavlos. Okay, fechten, yeah, fencing. Okay, okay. Look at it from this perspective. Standing here, a lot of the professional fencers they simply let their left arm wiggle somewhere here. But classic is this, okay, okay, and motion, okay, steps, all kinds of steps, and all the time keeping the position so that you seeing from the side whatever you do with uh, your legs. Okay, must not have an influence on your arm because naturally it is like a cat that is going for the prey. It's also moving, if you watch her, the head is on the same level and the feet are working. Okay, that's the same in fencing. That's why I found it very uh, helpful to use at the same time some element of Qigong because Qigong is exactly coordination perfect position yeah? even with your clothes if you work Qigong with your closed eyes you have to know where you are okay so uh, we have various jumps also in fencing yeah? forward jump backward jump yeah? And again, it has to be low on the ground, so that you don't go up and up and your hand is starting to wiggle like that. It has to be like, like a tiger going for a prey. Okay. 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 So that your arm does not go like that. Okay. I would find it helpful, for at least for gifted pupils and students, uh, to train also on the other side, it's very difficult. It's very difficult, no? okay, but because of the symmetry of the body, okay. And actually, in real fall, in a real fight, in old times, you could not say, "Oh well, uh, excuse me, uh, I have a pain in my right elbow." We, we stopped the fight. Now you had to take your left hand and. Defend yourself, nevertheless. Okay, so then we have the famous attack. Okay. For that, naturally, you have to be prepared, as generally for the training, we have to do some preliminary gymnastics for all joints ne? and stretching, naturally, especially the stretching in this part. For the okay, you can like that also. Uh, there are hundreds, hundreds of exercises. Okay, hundreds of exercises that accompany the the training, and this is just just a short overview. So, and then you go forward, and again, you get ready. Stretch your arm first. And then we like to pull it. Okay, to the side. So it just looks like and then. It is and then. Okay, first arm, then she. And then you have the combinations, and then you have the various paradas. Areas. Since I don't have my, I don't have my foil here with me. Take a tennis rocket. Okay. So you have the quad. Cover your upper part of the body. Upper left part of the body here. You have your tats. You cover this part of the body. You 
have your second you call it lower right part of the body and you have circle you cover your stomach and then naturally in combinations that's the fencing yeah? okay so tennis is also very good <laughs> a combination of tennis fencing and qigong gives you uh, combinations like this okay very yes, art of motion what I think is uh, really important is to stress um, I say it like this here to stress the let us say psychological aspect of fencing for youth training uh, because um, the upright position of the spine what does it mean look at this beautiful location this is the University of Constance training area and you see nobody is here because the students prefer to stay in the bed and uh, Sunday midday okay what does it say to you they do not have a physiologi physiologically grounded desire to get out and move okay so um, as I say following the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche he says all the morals must be rooted in blood otherwise they have no value no permanent value so and I had the privilege to spend um, 10 years of my youth between 10s and the 20s here in the um, um, professional sports area in Prague where I was specializing in fencing and we were chosen for that. But what I tell you, a pride position for the spa. We know from meditation that what does it mean? If you sit upright in the meditation, you simply cannot have depression because the complete stretching of uh, your spine with the nerves inside yeah, simply, uh, simply mm, works contrary to a kind of position like this okay so fencing forces you to sit upright on your legs but it is not only that like in meditation you know? these legs are moving and there is hot blood rising in the course of the fight so you have two elements you have the upright position of the spine and you have the agonistic element of uh, adrenaline and adrem uh, endomorphin okay this this uh, ecstasies of uh, sport so and then this is combined in uh, in proper doses in a young age especially in a boy then he will become or his soul will become as much as a soul of a knight as it could be and this cannot be achieved in any other way you can talk endlessly you can uh, show endless war films, warrior films of old times, you can play war games, you can go for hiking to the mountains, whatever. This combination of standing against an enemy, keeping your position strong, this is actually the ideal combination of, uh, like you have a music uh, conductor. He is crazy because he loves the music, yeah? but he has to keep the notes and the tempo. So they say there's a great kick and great achievement in conducting. Okay. So the same in fencing. You have uh, hot blood, you're running to and fro. It is uh, exhausting uh, for your condition uh, because you have to keep, keep the menzua, which is the distance between the two fences. The distance between the defenses must stay all the time the same, okay, so they chase each other across the plane and then there are these attacks and at the same time there must be a complete, at least ideally, complete control of uh, your arm parades you have to keep in mind and you have to calculate what the other guy is going to do. Is he going to attack stride forward so I can parry and uh, 
Okay, is he going to away? So welcome to the second part of our short lesson in fencing. Well, I was interrupted by the battery. So as I have said, there is this ideal combination of Apollo, symmetry, control of a detailed movement, and I would what I could say agonistic ecstasy or Dionysus, this is the heartbeat and the running to and fro and this general arousal, the central arousal of a fight which boys naturally love to do, okay? So, and if it is structured in the right time that you will achieve the kind of you know, nights of honor, mental uh, training, it, which is rooted in the body. This is important. I, for my person, must say that it has brought me great difficulty in the course of time in all kinds of uh, possibilities of life that I was not corruptible. When there was a kind of dealing, a man to man, I always uh, was expecting a kind of Knights of Honor code of morals because it was in my blood. And if I, if I was forced uh, or it, it was suggested that I do something, you know, and there will be some, you know, extra money and so that, I my blood was boiling because it was not according to the rules. You know? So this is it. And um, uh, there is an aesthetic element, natural beauty. You know? Okay. And uh, heartbeat training, you know, condition, coordination, and acceleration, and everything is there. So, fencing, I would highly recommend to everybody who wants his boys, um, uh, well, girls also in a certain style, in a certain way, but they should be trained then by women, I guess. Because uh, this is a specific uh, part of the training when the trainer and the boy and the young fencer have this community of training for a long time. When the young is uh, exhausted, you know, the old and wise warrior, he must stand there and talk to him and wait until he recovers, but not give up himself. Okay, He's standing there. He is a great example. And this is uh, the way how he's being drawn up, uh, he's being pushed up uh, because he admires the old person and there's a kind of, uh, yeah, uh, this is the old Greek ideal of those uh, manly friendship, which is naturally without any, uh, I guess it was even old Greece, not so much as we would see it in the homoerotical, homosexual, um, a variation as it was in Sparta sometimes suggested they had a different uh, eros they had a completely different eros than we have today okay the sexes was not so dominant in it it was the admiration for harmony beauty friendship elements all around the gods naturally okay the gods because why did the Greeks admire a beautiful body or why did they admire a splendid sportive achievement? It was because gods were watching and in the moment of this um, uh, achievement the gods would drive down and possess the body. They would live through the body of the athlete and uh, like that the athlete would uh, perform super human uh, as a tasks, yeah. jumps and runs and so and fights. Okay, so and uh, as everybody at that time believed in these gods, uh, it was a great advantage if uh, a runner from a certain city was the winner. Everybody knew, or if the wrestler or the fencer or spear thrower was the best in all Greece. Everybody knew that at that for that time the god Ares, for example, was residing in the temple of that city. And that's why everybody was, you know, 
Beware, beware. Do not attack that city because they have gods on their side. So these are myths. And in the modern times, when the boys would just sit and you see what's on the internet and what is on the TV and endless, it is uh, certainly a great adventure to experience something of that in reality and see what it takes so to stand and fight okay. so this is what would be a uh, kind of say a uh, psychological uh, aesthetical and even historical approach to uh, the modern teaching of fencing bye bye